I just feel like when I go home, I can just be me, like, you know? I'm a simple guy, like, put me in a bar with my very close friends before a football match. It's probably, probably not many other places I'd want to be. That's what I love about where I'm from. I can go down and just be myself and be the same kid that was there 15 years ago, but I just happen to be good at golf now, you know? Naturally, the game comes easy to me when I'm on. But I don't like being called naturally talented because that gives you the impression that you don't have to work at it. And that's what people think I am. People that don't know me think, oh, he's just, he goes home and he has a few drinks and he happens to be good at golf, but that's far from the case. I'd love to be consistently very good, but I'll take streaky and winning big tournaments over being consistently average. I was born in a place called Mullingar in County Westmead on the 2nd of April 1987. But I grew up in a place called Clara, County Offaly, right in the middle of Ireland. My childhood was spent outside in the fresh air. I'm still very good friends with a lot of people I grew up with. You know, all we did was play football up and down the road and, you know, out in the fields. And we used to leave the house in the morning uh, during the summers and you wouldn't come back till it was dark at night time. So the town where I'm from is quite small. It's pretty much like any small town in Ireland. You know, there's a few pubs where people socialise, there's a couple of shops, probably a place where everybody knows everybody. And the big thing in the town is probably the local Gaelic football community. And that's where I grew up in. was a sportsman essentially. Um, he played Gaelic football and he was quite successful at it. In 1982 he won the All-Ireland Championship which was a big deal. Kerry were the team to beat back then and my dad's team awfully scored a, a goal in the last minute to beat them by one point. I'd say it's probably the most famous game of football or Gaelic football that's ever been played. Yeah, it's one of those that uh, people always talk about. It's the most popular sport in Ireland. It's such a big deal in our country, like, there'll be 80,000 people at games. Even to this day, I go as much as I can. You know, it's probably my first love of sport, and it was a great game to be involved in growing up. I was the only person in my school to play golf. But we had, like, a local pitch and puck club. So I played there. That's where I had first held the club, I suppose. And then they built a golf course about five miles from our house in 1997, a place called Esker Hills, which is where I grew up. And uh, yeah, I just, I fell, completely fell in love with the game. I'm such a competitive person that I, I realized I was okay at it. So I just wanted to get better. During the summers, I was out there every day and every Saturday, Sunday during school, I was out in the golf club, even some days during school days when I shouldn't have been, but yeah. Funny, as a kid, I was a very social person, but I didn't go out. Like, I had a lot of friends, but when we got to sort of the age where kids start to drink and start to go out, all I wanted to do was play golf. You know, sort of 15, 16, 17, I just set in on a Friday and Saturday night, clean my clubs, getting ready for the weekly competition the following morning, and I'd, I'd go and I'd play probably 36 holes on a Saturday and Sunday, and that's where I was at my happiest. I used to play a lot of golf on my own as a kid, but I wouldn't count myself as a loner. It, I was just obsessed with the game of golf. When I look back on it, they're probably the reason I'm here today. I'd say one of the first opens that I watched was Tiger in 2000. Like, I would have been only 13 at the time. I started playing golf, probably watching golf because of Tiger, I'd say and you start to realise what golf is about and you start to fall in love with the game, which is what I was doing. Like, you always would have been holding that putt to win the open on your putting green against your friends.
I was probably a little bit of a late bloomer when it came to the amateur game. Like I played for Ireland boys, which is under 18s, but I just about made that team. And the only reason I got on was because Rory didn't want to be on it, because he wanted to be on the men's panel. But then when I got on that, it seemed like my amateur career just went pretty good from there. Then I started to win tournaments. Rory was always a big deal. You know, he's always a big draw, but the only thing is, I think I benefited from that as well. You get to play with him, you get to play in front of big crowds. You know, the media wanted a piece of him, so they all, all of a sudden you, they wanted a piece of everyone else. You had to do interviews, so it, it helped me in my development as a player and as a person. And suddenly all that emotion, which had kept bottled up brilliantly all week, comes pouring out. And Shane Lowry has given Ireland an Irish Open champion, and he's done it as an amateur. Win the Irish Open as an amateur. One of the most incredible things ever to happen to me. Gary McElroy, who himself knows the joy of winning in the European Tour, delighted for his old amateur buddy. Who would have believed it? The difference between finishing first and second for me that week, you can't even describe. You know, I got two year exemption on tour. I get to go out and see how good I actually am and, and I don't have to worry about making cuts for a while and that had a huge part to play in my whole development as a player. Going from playing 15 amateur events a year where you're travelling with a team and you're staying with your friends to travelling the world playing 30 events a year, staying on your own in, in weird places. It's just a bit different for a young kid from where I grew up. So it took a bit of getting used to it, but you know, after the Irish Open, there's obviously a lot of expectation. I didn't perform to the best of my ability. But I think from 2010 onwards, you know, I started to get better every year. So that was kind of what I was judging the whole thing on. I got to play my first Open, very fortunately, in St Andrews. To play an Open there is incredible. I was 23 years of age, a young pro, staying in the Old Course Hotel in St Andrews, playing in the Open Championship. As a golfer, it's the most special place in the world. I actually played quite well. I don't remember what I shot, but I remember I did an OK second round, all of a sudden I ended up, I was in like about top 18 going into Saturday. And I went out and Tiger three put it the last on Saturday, and if he two put it, I was playing with him on Sunday. I still haven't played with him ever, but uh, I played with Vijay Singh on the Sunday, I remember, and Tiger was in the group behind us. Like, it didn't really get much better at the time. That was the fondest memories ever of my first Open. Like, couldn't have happened in a better place. So I didn't qualify in 2011. I didn't qualify in 2012. Muirfield 2013. I remember I played all right that week. Did okay, mid 30s or something again. 2014, I, I shot 65 in the final round, actually to finish ninth. That was my best finish ever in a major. And then from 2015 onwards, it was kind of all downhill at the Open Championship. Going through a pretty bad, pretty tough place in my career. I wasn't doing very well, wasn't making many cuts. And if I made the cut, I was struggling. I was finishing 40 at every week. And it's just a difficult place to be. That was the worst score I could have shot today. I mean, uh, that's it. Like, another disappointing day in the golf course. I'm starting to get sick of them. You know, as a professional golfer, when you're going through something like that, you need, you need to change something. One of the first things, unfortunately, this is just the way the business is, is the caddy is the first person that get looked at. And to be honest, I have so many regrets from that week in Carnoustie. You know, myself and Dermot had had an unbelievable run. We had been very successful together. We'd won big tournaments, and he was a very good friend of mine. So this is probably why it was harder than anything I've ever done. You know, we, we had a bit of a tiff after the first round. I pulled the plug that Thursday night. I went off into the car, and I put back the seat in the car, and just lay there, and I cried for a few minutes. and. Like, it's a bit silly because there's a lot of other people in the world much worse off than I was at the time. You know, I messed up there because I really feel like we should have finished out the week.
Championship returns to Royal Portrush. Now the Open Golf returning to Royal Portrush in the first time Ireland. in 68, 70 years that it has been Ireland. in Northern Ireland. First time since 1951. 235,000 spectators are expecting to descend on this very small coastal town of Northern Ireland. I'll never forget driving down. It must have been like 6.15 because it was just before Darren hit the first tee shot. And I'll never forget the crowds. On the tee from the Republic of Ireland, Shane Lowry. Thursday morning was probably the most nervous I've ever been on the first tee of a tournament, ever. I knew everybody had tickets for the weekend, so the first thing you don't want to do is go miss the cut. I remember seeing on the scoreboard that Rory McIlroy just made eight on the first. I just feel incredibly sorry for him. I must have played really good because I remember coming in thinking four under was nice, you know, it was a decent score, but it wasn't unbelievable. Well done. Round of 67. And then all of a sudden, as the day went on, I was still leading and I was still leading. I was off to a lovely start. Shane Lowry for birdie at the first. Yeah. Oh, please, everyone. Yeah. So what a start. A perceptible air of excitement around Port Rush with Shane Lowry's charge. What about this? Oh, and he's nearly popped and straight in for another birdie. What a start by Shane Lowry. That start in the second round was like, I'm playing probably the golf of my life. I'm five under after nine, I'm flying. That's the cup made. I'm in the tournament now. The fact that you're in your home country and everybody's shouting for you, and Rory's on the course, but he's trying to make the cut, and I'm leading the tournament, so maybe the crowds are starting to shift over to where I am, and how cool is this, like, I'm leading the Open. Like, the 10th hole is like a narrow green, but the people are on the banks on the right, and honestly, it felt like there was 50,000 people around the green. Like, it, you know, they're, they're on top of you because it's such a narrow green, and I hit the putt or whatever, and as it was, you know, getting closer to the hole, I was like, this has a chance, and as it went in, I remember the crowd going mental. I remember just looking at my caddy and started to laugh because you know nobody was supposed to be six under after ten holes in Port Rush that week. It just it wasn't supposed to happen. I knew it was going to be Irish people out there in their droves on, on Saturday. I was, I was ready for it. I get down onto the tee and I'm looking around, the crowd are going mental. I'm just taking it all in, I'm like, this is incredible. On the tee from the Republic of Ireland. My name was announced and the crowd kept on cheering. Shane Lowry. And the ball's in the ground and I'm ready to go and they're still cheering. It was a little bit off-putting, if anything. I just tried to hit the best shot I could. To be honest, I just tried to keep it between the white posts. <laughs> when I get in between the ropes, that's where I'm at my best. Like, little did I know that it was going to be one of the most special days I've ever had in the golf course. I birdied third, I birdied five. Two birdies in the first five. Confident start for the home favourite. The ninth hole is an extremely difficult hole because the tee shot is just so tricky. But I remember it just stayed out of that bunker on the right. The pin was sort of at the front, and I hit most perfect eight iron to about eight feet. To be honest, all I wanted to do was hold the putt because the roar is like, you know, you know you're getting a big roar, and I hold that putt, huge roar. Yeah! There you go, Shane Lowry. Same move to 11 under, he's leading the open 
championship. That's where my round got going. Tenth hole, I hit a bad tee shot up into the left rough. We had a big conversation about this because the wind was sort of out of right. And I felt like if I hit an eight iron too hard, the wind would get it and it would just go left. You got your target then? Don't want to be going too far left. No, because the only thing is, both this comes out hot and pitches like five on the green. Does it go straight to the green? I think it's very unlikely, just on the angle. Do you know what I mean? Because it's going to run up one of those banks. You know, between myself and Bo, we decided to just like chip a seven iron, try and run it up the green. And if you got it going or left of the flag, there was little banks that it would camber back on. I just feel like if I hit it, there's a chance of going left. Uh, that's the club. I mean, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bo called it. He called it perfectly. It actually made him look very good. <laughs> down to about six feet and then I, I roll the putt in. Oh, what a boy, Shane Lowry. What a boy. 12 under. Things were really going my way at that stage. I played the last few holes like I've never played like four holes in my life. I hit a good tee shot at 15, there was only a sand wedge in. And hit a nice shot to maybe 15 feet. You know, roll the put in, left or right put. Crowd are going nuts. And it's a two shot lead for Shane Lowry. You get to 16, obviously one of the most famous holes on the, on the golf course, and you're just like, it's a disaster hole, really. Sometimes you'd even take a four on the hole. It was a perfect four iron. Oh, it is gorgeous, it's absolutely gorgeous. And this thing just come off like so perfect. What is that? Shane Lowry. It's great to hit them shots, but to go up and hold the putt then as well, that was even better. So to birdie that hole, like you're gaining at least a shot in the field. Then 17, I hit a great tee shot down there, and I hit a lovely chip to about three feet again. I think I was, I was aware enough to actually realise I was doing something very special. This is just extraordinary. Someone's going to wake me up any minute. Hold the putt. Crowd are going mental. I remember walking to the 18 t and it was just, it was just nuts. A four-shot lead for Shane Lowry. And I said to Bo, let's enjoy this next 20 minutes because who knows if this is ever going to happen again. When I look back on that Saturday evening, like, oh my God, like, it was one of the most incredible things ever. I looked up at the leaderboard, I was 16 under, Tommy was 12. I hadn't won anything, but I had so much to lose. That's the most incredible day I've ever had on the golf course. It's, <laughs> I honestly can't explain what it was like. Are you in the back? Shane, I remember speaking to you just after Oakmont or a year after Oakmont. <laughs> I was waiting for it to come up. I was waiting for it. Uh, look, let's get Oakmont out in the open here now. I said to the bow when I finished, um, looked at the leaderboard four ahead. I said to bow, I said, at least I won't have to answer any questions about Oakmont now. Four ahead, went into the final round of a major. Um, so look, I learned a lot that day. I learned a lot about myself in Oakmont and um, I'm going to learn a lot about myself tomorrow. I said one thing to my coach on Sunday morning. I said to him, there's no in between today. Like, it's either gonna be one of the best days of my life or one of the worst. And, and like people say to you to go and enjoy it, like, you know, you're in a great place, enjoy the final round. Like, like don't be stupid, like I'm not gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be horrible. I get up, I barely have breakfast, I didn't have lunch. Bo kept on saying to me, you may eat something. I'm like, I can't, like I physically can't. I genuinely think if I didn't win on that Sunday, I still wouldn't be over it. Like, it took me a while to get over Oakmont, but this was a whole bigger deal than Oakmont. The first tee on the Sunday was probably 
Probably one of the hardest places I've ever been. If you put me back in that first tee now on the Sunday, I'm not sure I'd be able to cope with the pressure of it right now. Like, And I remember getting to the tee and the weather was worse and the wind was a bit of a different direction, so I was into the wind. My two iron, I'm just a little bit less comfortable with it. And I said to Bo, I said, is three iron enough? He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, it's two iron. I'm like, oh my God. So I stand up and I just try and do my thing and I hit like a low pull off the tee. And I get down and my lie's like, oh, it's not bad. I hit it and I was like, oh my God, I said, I cannot wait to hear this roar. And next thing you pitched in the face of the bunker. Oh, anywhere but in that bunker. I couldn't have hit it in a worse place. Then Tommy's obviously had two great shots, about eight feet. The bunker shot was very difficult. I actually had a decent bunker shot and it spun back a lot. And I go up and I hit a, I hit a really bad first putt. I need it like six, seven feet short. And there you are now, you're standing there. And you know, Tommy holds that and I miss. All of a sudden I'm one ahead. 15 minutes earlier, I was four ahead. Tommy missed his putt and I hold mine. I lost a shot, but I went to the tee feeling like I gained a shot. I can imagine being Tommy Fleetwood that day was probably one of the most difficult situations he's ever found himself in because there wasn't very many people out there that wanted him to win that day. The thing is about the Irish is we're unbelievable supporters of our own people. There's probably people there that would never have watched golf before. And then the bad weather came in. I had a look at the Bork and everybody was struggling. Like everybody was making bogeys and everybody was over par. So I think that gave me a bit of a boost. I was just trying to match Tommy in every hole. That's all I had in my head. Fifteen, I stood up and I hit a lovely wedge shot to about six or eight feet. And I think when you see the emotion I show after holding that putt, that's where I must have felt that's that was it. Like that was the tournament over at that stage. What a time to throw in another birdie! I didn't fully let myself believe it was over until I hit my tee shot on seventeen. Like I really didn't fully. And, and I, I do remember I seen my friends from home on the top of this sand dune, and they were jumping around. I was like, well, they definitely think it's over anyway. <laughs> and these are moments that he and everyone else in Irish golf will never forget. I could not believe that that was happening to me. It's just one of those things that, where I grew up, in the environment I grew up, you don't want to let yourself believe or see that you're going to do something like that, because more often than not, it'll probably be a letdown. Twelve months previous, I was lying in the car crying myself. Shane Lowry is the Open champion. When I look back on it, the people who were standing behind the 18 green, everybody who was there has had a huge influence my whole career. My wife, my family, my parents. GMAC was there. Boric was there. Gary Murphy, who was a big influence in my career when I started out. You know, my coach, my manager, everybody. To be able to bring joy to so many people. I suppose when I look back on it, I think that weekend I brought a country together. I grew up, my dad was my idol, like, and now I've like, been able to hand my dad the Claret Jug on, on the 18th green. And just to set the seal on an unforgettable week, an Irishman has won in Ireland. I feel like I really kind of united a country that afternoon in Porosh. Why did I 
I celebrate the way I did. There's no point going away hiding. I think it's because of where I'm from. That's how we celebrate things. You know, when somebody's in trouble, everybody helps them out. When somebody does well, everybody celebrates together. That's where we're from, like. I love where I'm from, and I wanted people to be able to see how much it meant to me. I got to bring the trophy out uh, in Crow Park on the Saturday evening afterwards, where 37 years earlier, my dad had had one of the greatest days of his life. It was a bit surreal, to be honest, just to be able to live that, like to be able to do that. The funny thing is, if I didn't win the Open the week before, I would have went to that game on the Saturday anyway. What an incredible trophy. And for me to have that on my mantelpiece in the house, like I walk in some mornings and it's hard to believe, you know? It doesn't worry me that the greatest day of my sporting career could be behind me. It doesn't worry me because no matter what, like we'll always have Portrush. No matter what happens the rest of my life, we'll always have that.